to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. We're not going to talk about devil shoes and lap dances with the devil, (laughs) but we are going to talk about the devil, the white devil, Mm -hmm. the one that killed uh, George Floyd last year. Goes on trial. The trial begins, the Derek Chauvin trial. Is it Chauvin or Chauvin? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, yeah. Um, at any rate, we were going over the charges because I think, A, you should know that this will be on television starting today on Court TV at 9 a.m., mm. which is going to add to the noise, which was already going to be very noisy. There was a, a vigil yesterday in Minneapolis. Uh, attorney Ben Crump, Al Sharpton, uh, churchgoers, you know, singing and having conversation and all of that, getting the energy right, going into what's going to be very tough for all of us because now all of these wounds from last year get reopened, right? And uh, we go back in and and dealing with the murder of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer, well, multiple police officers, but the main one, Derek Chauvin. And the truth is we're all going to be unhappy if we get a conviction here because the conviction will not be a murder charge like a murder one or a life in prison or some penalty that we feel is just to deal with the way we saw George Floyd get killed. Mm. But the charges, mm. it sounds like they're attainable, right, Rosenberg? Yeah, I think so. Um, I guess the hardest one to, to do would be the second degree murder charge. How many charges did he get? So there's second degree murder, mm-hmm. there's third degree murder, and there's second okay. degree manslaughter. Second degree murder would be if he intentionally killed George Floyd, but without premeditation, or unintentionally killed him while committing certain other offenses. The the third degree murder and that that sentence, by the way. Yeah. And that second degree murder has a uh, has a time of what, like forty years? Yeah, that's the stiffest sentence. And that's and that we from our reading, and we'll get some more professionals on this. That sounds like the toughest one to get right there. Well, because that word intentional. But wasn't the second part of that or unintentionally what? Or unintentional murder, but he had to have been doing some other things that, you know, made the murder happen. Like leaning on his neck for nine minutes. But they're right, going to so say that that would... I'm telling y'all right now, they're going to say that the way he had his knee on his neck and face was following the rules of police training. Right. I can tell you they're going to come with that right now in for his sure. defense. For sure. So then you go to the third degree murder, which would be unintentionally cause the death of another by perpetuating an act eminently dangerous to others without regard for human life. And then the second degree manslaughter, when a person causes the death of another by creating an unreasonable risk and consciously takes chances of causing death or great bodily harm to another, which would seem like that's almost a no-brainer. Right, right, because that seems like, boom, that one's in the bag. And... Am I remembering it correctly? I don't know if anybody on the program knows, but the second degree murder charge was just added in. Yeah, it was it was originally just third degree murder and the second degree manslaughter, and they they added that. I wonder why they added. If there was pressure, people wanted more. Maybe. And I'm... initially, they thought, "Hey, we're not going to get that done." Keith Ellison, the attorney general of Minnesota, might have thought that's not realistic. He knows this stuff well. It was trying to go for the most realistic prosecution but then maybe they felt pressure to do more yeah yeah and it's like i'm trying to remember little bits of the case but wasn't there a a scenario and and correct me if i'm wrong where it's like later on they found out that derek chauvin knew george floyd from uh they work together yep they work together okay and but they obviously pulled that out but that that's obviously not being considered here because that would have been don't you think, guys, that would have been, if they were going for premeditation, that would they have would been have relevant? Had, but then they would have had to prove that they had a conflict. Right. And that probably would have caused uh, some issues. 
The other piece that's going to get pulled out is all of these allegations we keep hearing about George Floyd having some substance abuse habits. Oh, you know they're going to try to use something, something like that to justify and, and, and anything. That being, and that being um, part of why he stayed on his neck. But then the, the whole eight minutes and 40 seconds, that is going to be focused on. That has to be. Why did you have to stay there for so long? Right. Meanwhile, there's a video, multiple videos of pedestrians saying, he, you're hurting him. And why did why right. did he ignore that? And one, I think I believe a woman was, uh, she was an EMT worker. Yep. And I believe she was telling him, "You are killing him." That's right. I, I hope they I hope they find her and she's able to testify. Well, so and, after- gonna, and, and that's part of the, um, I think the, what what was it the third degree murder charge the un the intentional versus unintentional when you have somebody literally telling you. And I'm wondering if this woman's going to be a witness. I know. I know. But it also it becomes very clear. If you've watched the long form versions of this um, situation, you can see how things were tense at the beginning. And, and there was you understand on some level how they could have gotten into a some sort of physical altercation. By the end, he's been laying there incapable of doing anything for several minutes he's out like you can tell he's been out he stops talking it's it's that that's where it'll be interesting when they go through that timeline but yet you kept kneeling kept kneeling kept like you know what i'm saying i i I don't see how he could get past that i don't see how he could escape that right um so it should be noted too do you guys remember officer noor he was, a, he was a black man. He was an officer, and he shot a white woman. This was also in Minneapolis, remember? And they convicted him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He got charged. He was convicted of the charge of third-degree murder um, because he shot his gun at a person outside of his squad's car window, and he killed the woman and endangered his own partner. And um, in that case, an appeals court ruled that third degree murder murder can be applied to instances in which a person applies force to a single person. Given that ruling, Attorney General Ellison filed a motion last month asking the district court to reinstate the charge to Officer Noor. Um, So there's precedent. The reason I tell you all that is there's precedent for the third degree murder charge. Against a police officer. So, you know, listen, no matter how this plays out, there will be a lot of emotions. Yeah. There will be a lot of news coverage. And I can tell you right now, none of these charges satisfy what I would like to see Derek Chauvin get. Right. And that's the thing, like, I think we were we were very hurt clearly when uh, Zimmerman got off, right? And we had to go through the the same kind of charges conversation and because they point, went for Shani, him to that point. After Shani, first degree, right? And that in the when uh, George Zimmerman was on trial, the charges that they went after George Zimmerman for, a lot of people thought were the wrong charges, which is why they didn't get the conviction. Right, because they went after first degree murder because he pursued. Trayvon and it felt intentional so it's like y'all look we know what this was and ultimately that stand your ground law that they have down in Florida worked in his favor worked in his favor so now we're trying to be very precise in how we charge these people well it's also a different state A it's a different state right so there's that Uh, B you're dealing with an officer which makes it even harder right and a civilian right so it will be on full display So buckle up, everybody, because the emotions will be high, man. It's Ebro Lauren Rosenberg. 